I want to give a very specific, distinct uh, pricing mental backflip, flip, flippity flip when it comes to window cleaning. And I'm going to give two examples. Sorry, it's extremely bright in my eye right now. Uh, uh, an example for window cleaning, because we do landscaping and window cleaning and how this ch changed my perspective and how we've been making more money with higher profit margins. And I used to do everything. I used to be the, what we call the $99 guy. And now we have a, oh, it's a $299 minimum to do any window cleaning job. I, I, I will break the rule if it makes sense, just like anything. Um, and then also we have a $700 minimum this year for landscaping. And so I used to run around all week and every, you know what I mean? You know the story. So I'll get right into it. <clears throat> I, uh, I know a, a lady who has window cleaners do her house inside and out very nice lady beautiful human being kindest heart in the world for real and this window cleaner does the windows inside and out of all these Pella windows for 150 bucks so I pr I'm pretty sure that means he's taking out the inner casement of the window there's, there's deer behind me running around I'm on my wedding anniversary with my wife and so I got a few minutes to make this video for you our wedding anniversary is tomorrow, but we're on a little Airbnb vacation. So I asked her, she said like, hey, uh, something about window cleaning. I said, oh, hey, you got a guy that cleans your windows. Do you mind if I ask what he charges? Because I know this this person, this lady very well. And she says, oh, he charges $150. I'm like, wait a second. How many square feet is your house? And she's like, oh, I think it's like 2700 or something. It's a huge ranch with windows, 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 all the way around. I'm like, whoa, Pella windows? I'm like, I was thinking more like minimum 450 up to 650 Could be 850 if we're taking all them out. And she's like, no, he charges me 150 bucks. I was like, what? And then just to kind of be, I, I couldn't help it. This was not a nice thing for me to say. I said, oh my God, I feel so bad for him. And she didn't say anything. I said, is he homeless? And I didn't mean anything mean by that. I'm like, actually my heart hurts. And then here's the lesson. Without even missing a beat, she goes, no, he's been doing my windows for like 12 years. Now this woman is a very nice woman. I'm not saying anything bad about her. But what I'm saying is, wait, wait, what is, no. He's been doing my windows for like 12 years. He's always charged me 150 bucks. What I mean is there's a total disconnect. If you said to somebody, oh my gosh, I'm starving. Are you hungry too? And they go, I thought the sky was blue with like, there is a few clouds. Like, like what? What is it? Total disconnect. And here's my point. The customer doesn't know. Well, some of them know, of course. You know, all different strokes, different folks. It's, this is a numbers game, right? But you can have highly intelligent, high moral, loving, caring people who are the nicest people in the world. They, and always, and still only pay $150 to do a $450 window cleaning job. And as long as there's window cleaners that are willing to do it, the, the customer doesn't care. They don't care. So if you have some huge emotional suffering, that you're, dude, I've gone through so much emotional suffering, man. I, I've told stories upon stories about this. I have an entire catalog of windows, window cleaning videos in below. If you want to hear customer nightmare stories and even laugh, click the link in the description below. Uh, it's a playlist, a window cleaning playlist. There's some funny videos in there, man. I'm, I'm saying I made them and they're funny. But I've had, I've been heartbroken, man. I've had customers that I knew. I thought I knew these people and I thought they cared about me and maybe they did. But as soon as I raised the price after three, four five years of cleaning their windows, they fired me when I raised the price to what it wasn't even industry standard price yet. So go find customers. Did you hear what I just said? I didn't say sit around and complain about the customers that you have more because you're afraid and you think that you can't find the customers. I said, go find customers who can pay what you're worth. Now, here's the next, it was a landscaping example, but it's still a pricing example. 
with our new seven hundred dollar minimum, it doesn't it does apply to everybody, but some of my existing clients that I've had forever, when we just show up to do like a tune up on the shrubs and some garden bed maintenance. I mean we're in and out in an hour and a half and uh maybe two hours and I'll charge I don't know I, I like to keep the invoices at, at at least 350 if we're in and out we'll go touch up some shrubs pull some weeds and we literally can be in and out i'm not i'm not lying here so it's totally worth it for me and i'm not going to try to charge a customer 700 dollars to go do a little tune-up on something and then possibly lose that customer i'm not stupid i'm just trying to increase profit margins and, and have a healthy business here but i do we do a job for a customer and i told them it was a 700 dollar minimum at the end of the job, I ended up billing um, it's like six fifty or something like that, or six eighty five, six fifty, and I got really like kind of nervous because I kept comparing it against what any other fully established landscaping company would do, and my billing was right for two thousand the year twenty twenty three with all this inflation, my billing was right. It still made me feel a little ah. So I'm having this kind of moral dilemma. Customer agreed. I never build a customer anything different than I than they agree to up front. That's what I build them. Hey, if something costs me more time and energy and money or materials, I just eat it. It's not, I'm not going to go back to my customer and ask for more money. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> Although I have done that in the past when we uh, did a huge landscape job a couple times and I ran out of uh, decorative stone, like the materials, because I was new. I didn't, I've knocked on the door before first couple years in the business hey uh i'm really embarrassed um we ran out of rocks if you pay for the rocks we'll install them for free we need like another ton of rocks to finish your job i'm really and the customers are like totally sure i totally understand and luckily they had mercy on me and we got the job done and i and i learned hard lessons and i'm glad that customers are very nice but um anyways so i have this whole kind of like quarrel about this in my head the customer agreed to the 700 a builder 650 then i was still worried for like a week thinking oh my god she's not gonna hire us back she's gonna be upset about the bill and i'm having this argument in my head going back and forth i'm like but the lady knew what our minimum was she knew what i was gonna bill her and i even billed her a little bit less because i was trying to be as fair as possible according to the standards of what we need to make to pay for payroll taxes general liability workers comp truck payment you know all the everything to run a healthy business and for to keep me on a, on a payroll it just has to be that way so um because i get these goofballs i post some of these videos on facebook and some of them will go you know tens of thousands hundreds hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions of views and i'll have mainstream america pour into the videos saying like this guy's a ripoff this guy's a scam artist i would never hire i'm like wait a second a ripoff and a scam artist is somebody who takes a deposit and doesn't perform the work or takes a deposit and bounces in the middle of the job and keeps the money or takes the money and does a horrible job. Well, you're not like magically siphoning money from customers. They're agreeing and they want it done and they're happily paying, right? We did this job for $9,430 so the landscape job and part of the rock demo uh, around the pools was three grand. So it was a lot of work. And customers like I could, people in the comments are like I could have done that for 500 or 1500 max this guy's a rip off it's like whatever man <laughs> you don't even know you go you go I'm just gonna shut up there so the uh so the customer after a week pays her bill I'm like Phew. now we do jobs anywhere from 700 to 20,000 bucks so a little $650 bill is not a big deal but it is a big deal because each customer is important. Every person and every human is important, except for the really crummy, scummy ones. But what I mean is like in, in your service business, every customer is important. This is all, uh, it's a big honor to be able to go on people's properties and take care of their properties and serve them. What a great blessing to have your own service business. This is amazing. I'm serious. So she pays her bill. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. In my head, I made up this thing. Like what if she's never gonna hire us back ever again? A month later, because we do uh, quarterly garden maintenance for our clients, some of them are monthly, 
some of them are quarterly we come in we clean the windows we do the shrub trimming we pull the weeds we edge the garden beds we put down mulch it's just these are normal clients the lady texts me and she wants us to come back and do more work i was like what more work and this time she actually said uh I don't, I don't think I quite have $700 worth of work this time, but we do need some stuff here and there. I was like, I got you. Oh my. I think that most, if not all of that entire worrying was completely in my head. Meanwhile, you got a totally different customer who's freaking out over $150 or $250 that they will never hire you. I think about this on and on. Um, there's another example of a customer. I guess here's my point. My favorite saying is get in where you fit in. You can have a hundred people on the same street, upper middle class subdivision. One person will never pay you 150 bucks to clean their windows. Another person will gladly pay 400. Another person, 300 is high. Another person is their mind is blown. You only charge 300. You gotta find the customers that fit for you because if you find the ones that are freaking out over 150 bucks or you charge so little that they don't even know and they don't even care like the first example of the lady that i told you was like what do you mean he's been doing my windows forever for 150 bucks like if because they automatically assume if that's what you're charging then that's what it is and they think what do you mean i i literally have had customers when i was at my wits end and stuck in a one-bedroom apartment back in the day when I've opened up to customers because there was a point where I got so sick of the business or so depressed or so burned out that I've literally just started telling customers stupid unprofessional things that I should never say just to get some feedback and find out where I'm at like like I've told a customer before um, I worked this whole year and after all expenses only made 32 grand right um, I don't know what year that was or the most I made so far was 52 grand I've made all different amounts like the first year in the business it just you know. so my point is I've had customers to go what you only make that much but you're the owner of the business I thought you'd make at least way more than that like 100 150 grand or something aren't you the you own a business and then all of a sudden I go in, like time space continuum, like wake up realization that I was stuck in my head that these customers who live in these beautiful four, five, six thousand square foot homes and drive Mercedes and BMWs and have go have vacation homes and go to have pools in their backyard and hundred thousand dollar patios with pergolas, they they look at you and they're like what do you mean you must make six figures you own a business like why would you even do it if you don't make six figures I don't, he's the company owner if people think like that imagine if you have an upset customer who for some reason wants to have litigation against you or sue you or, or charge you and say that you broke or scratched their windows or something even if you didn't like all i'm saying is they're assuming you have a lot of money <laughs> some of them think about all this from different perspectives and get out of your head if you do work for customers for peanuts, there's a saying, you got to keep them how you got them. If you start out at 150 bucks cleaning someone's windows, you're probably going to have to keep it at that. And the most you're going to be able to raise that price is like 10% year after year after year, little by little by little. So you're constantly losing the whole app. Now, what I said, get in where you fit in means you got to charge what you got to charge to get, if you're just starting the business to, to get in and make the money you need to make. To at least get some work flowing and some revenue going so because baggers can't be choosers this is like so common obvious so it's like assess the situation where you're at and then start marketing and advertising and split testing and it's like if, if you believe it's like, it's like here i got it here's the line if you believe that you'll never be able to make more money in your city or your neighborhood you have to find out and have discernment and use math and data and do a bunch of research to find out and you're and challenge your own gut feeling intellect and all that and say what percentage of these thoughts and feelings and beliefs are real or real or just inside of my head causing these emotions that I can't make more money doing this or I can't charge more what percentage of it 
Is it a 50-50? Is it like 80% you live in like the worst town ever and you can't get more money to clean the windows? Or is it like 80% all in your head and you just keep going for the bottom 20% of customers? Like, where is this? It's a it's an uncomfortable thing to question and talk about. But I have a friend, his name was Brandon. He was my mentor when starting my window cleaning business. He's like, bro, I'm making at least 1500 a day every single day that we go out and we do window cleaning and pressure washing every day i clear about a thousand dollars he says i clear minimum 100 dollars an hour every single hour i'm out there minimum and then um i didn't believe him now i don't know if that was profit or I think he said at the bare minimum, he's, he's doing a hundred dollars an hour profit. He's like, come with me. I'll show you. So I meet him at a spot, uh, hop in his truck and we go and we clean windows. We do this big mansion and the bill was like $1,586 and we were in by like, I don't know what it was late 10 AM. We were out by four, four fifteen, four thirty PM. It's like five and a half, six hours, 1586 bucks. And I think I did all the inside windows and all the French windows. He did all the outside windows with a water fed pole. And then he came in and he helped me finish the insides and we were out. And he said that he also had charged them 1500 or 2500 to do some power washing a different day. Ow, this horse fly is biting my leg. And I was like, whoa, you just made that. Oh, my God, that amount of money you do. He goes, I do this all the time. What are you talking about? I'm like, that would change my whole life. How do you get this? You do the, oh, my God. He goes, yeah. He goes, how far did we drive to get here? I'm like, do like 15, 20 miles to get to this city where all these big houses are. He's like, exactly. Like, if you have to drive out to the west side. not what, I mean, like the west side or, or the east side or the north side to go to where the money is at. That's where the money's at. So if you get up a half an hour earlier and you sit a little bit in a little bit of traffic on the way back, but you're doing a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks or you're cleaning houses for six, eight, twelve hundred dollars, wouldn't that be worth it? And if you're just cleaning one house for a grand and then you drive back and you're back at the same time as if you would have cleaned four houses and made even less money by seven or eight p.m. But you're back by like 5 p.m. And it's not like every single day you're getting thousand to fifteen hundred dollar houses. But if you set some type of minimum, now here's here's like it takes a long time to build a healthy clientele, so you got to keep going like a sewing machine. I think I'm like talking to like the brand new guys right now. And then you have your attrition, attrition, attrition rate, which people. I'm sick of hearing myself talk right now. Ah. <sighs> Seven hundred dollar minimum in my business, three hundred for window cleaning. My mind is blown because we're losing clients and customers, and then we have new customers coming in that are paying it. We have regular customers that are sticking around and paying it, and they understand. And the ones who don't, they fall off. So you get new customers. If you listen to uh, some Piranha Marketing by uh, Joe Polish, it's amazing. He talks about this mathematical algorithm they've figured out that you can raise your prices a certain amount and the amount of customers you'll lose will equal out usually exactly so you're just doing less work and making the same money does that make sense and that's not the goal the goal is to keep working full-time but make more and more and more money so if you have healthy enough profit margins then you can afford to do what you always wanted to do a lot of barking so last night uh there was a bunch of deer out in this backyard here at this airbnb huge deer my, i let my little dog out to go potty and these family of deer is like right there like maybe 10 20 50 60 feet away from me and this huge is it called a doe a female deer looking right at me and i said hey and all their ears went up. They saw me before I even saw them. 
Then my little dog starts growling. I'm like, you be nice to that deer. He's a good boy. <laughs>